everybody. Welcome to my workshop. I am so proud to be on your Miss Mustard Seeds milk paint team. I've also been a retailer since 2014. And since then, I've learned a lot, made a lot of mistakes. And today while I was down here working, I thought I'm going to share one of my favorite techniques with you. I call it a two-tone distress, and it's very simple to do. Three simple steps, and you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck. So this is what it's going to look like when we're done. Isn't that pretty? Now on this piece, you can tell, if you can see, I've got three different waxes going on there. I have a clear wax, a dark wax, and then a white wax as well. So we'll work with that as soon as we get our pieces done. Now, the first thing I want to show you is you'd be obviously working on a piece of furniture or a frame, um, whatever you're working on. I get my paint, mix it up. And if you ever have any questions on how to mix your Miss Mustard Seeds milk paint, there are so many tutorials out there that can help you. Or send me a question. I'm happy to help. I've done training before. I love to share techniques, so I'd be happy to help you. So we have our paint mixed up. And what you're going to do is just take it. And as you're putting it on, instead of doing your typical nice smooth coat, you're going to get a little extra paint on there and you're going to stipple it. And by stipple, I mean bounce it on there and get some texture. You should see a little bit of texture so it doesn't look nice and smooth. And that's what you're going to continue to do in the area that you want to use this technique. So stipple, stipple, stipple. Very simple to do. Now, what you're going to do next is let that sit and dry. It might take a little longer to dry because you had some texture on that piece. So you want to make sure it's very, very dry before you go to the next step. The next step, very simple. Get whatever color you're going to do on top, whatever your second color is going to be. I'm going to use flow blue because I love black and flow blue together. There's an array of colors you can use, sometimes two colors that are very similar, such as luckets and boxwoods. Those look really good with the two-tone distress. So mix up my low blue. And then I'm just going to take, just make nice a nice easy coat. Now, sometimes when I do this and use this technique, I like to not cover it totally. See how I'm leaving a little bit not covered? And you can see a little bit of the black showing through. I do that in little areas. And that will help with the technique too. There we go. So you're just going to cover it. And then once again, you're going to let this sit and make sure it's really dry because the next step is sanding. And you want to make sure your paint's very dry before you start sanding anything. So this is what it looks like. You're going to take your sandpaper. And I like to use about a 220 grit to start. Um, if I have trouble removing some of the paint, I'll go up to maybe 100 grit. But I don't like to, to go too deep or too much deeper than that because I'm afraid you'll get down past your original coat. So I just sand it in a circular motion. And as you're doing it, you might be looking at it and thinking, I'm not seeing too much. But once you put a little bit of our wax on it, that's when the beauty starts to happen. You will see where you've stippled and where you had the higher textured pieces of paint it comes off as you sand it and then the rest stays on and it gives you such a great two-tone effect. Now, I've never done a whole piece of furniture using this technique. I have done drawers, like the sides of drawers to where it looks like it's been really rubbed off over time. Um, I've done maybe on a buffet, uh, up and down on the side, just areas where I wanted to put just a little bit of texture and maybe add a little bit of uh, two-tone color to it. But it's very easy, so simple to do. I want everybody to do this, and I want to see your pieces. Make sure you send me pictures of your pieces. So while I have you down here, I'll also show you. Now, you saw a typewriter um, with this technique. Another technique I use a lot is the hemp oil distress. Now, you can see this is such a smooth, even coverage of our paint. And what I did mixed up my paint, this has about two coats on it, and then I take my hemp oil and brush it on, and then I take a lint-free cloth and wipe a bit, and then I take my, uh, my sandpaper and lightly sand it. 
Now, sometimes if I haven't put as much hemp oil on it, I'll put the hemp oil on and then sand. It just kind of depends on how much hemp oil I've put on and also the texture that I'm trying to get. This piece, I wanted it very smooth. The only place that I wanted the original wood to shine through was on all of the trim. So it looked like it was naturally worn. So that's another look you can get. And then one more look. This has also been hemp oil distressed, but a little differently. You can see that there's a lot of distressing on this, but what I did with this piece was painted it, put on my hemp oil, and then right away took my wax, or my, my wax paper, my, my sandpaper, sanded it off, and every place that the a little bit of the original cover was, some of the top coat, it let, it came off very, very easily. And it gave it a very natural look, a very worn, natural look. And I did do this technique on the entire dresser. It's a very large dresser, several, um, several drawers, and I did it along the whole entire piece. And I really liked, and it had a mirror too, and I did it all the way around the trim of the mirror. And I liked how it ended up looking very uniform. So, very easy to do. Our paint can have so many different textures to it, just depending on what you want to do. And like I said, if you have any questions, please send me a text, an email, um, message me here. I'm happy to help. I love to teach. I love to share. And I hope you can try these techniques out. And like I said, have any questions, just message me. Thanks a lot.